Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Twas blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fear relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Twas grace that brought me safe this far, and grace will lead. When we've been here ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when. Then she felt it was that she needed to be more careful about the rest of the family. And then she felt lost without any medical work. So and money and she both decided to move it. Her father would always help them to look up, open up clinics. So why don't you open up clinics here for them? The people now really do. Till Baba dropped his body, there was no dispensary here. Mm -hmm. But I would keep every, uh, all the medicines, equipment, everything for any emergency. Baba would always allow me to treat any emergency that came from religious. And uh, after Baba dropped his body, I actually I was so disgusted with medicine, and so you know, thinking that what mm. use is medicine, and I couldn't help uh, Baba. It was very frustrating for me, so I sent all the medicine to the Salvation Army Hospital. Oh, oh God. <laughs> After that, we went to Pune for the Great Darshan. And uh, I, I told all the monthly here that I'm not going to practice medicine anymore now. I don't have to do anything with medicine. <laughs> so after I returned from Pune, after a month or so, you know, errors and money and all that, I said, look, Baba would always, Baba was always wanting you to do medicine and this is the one thing that you can do to please him. So again I had to start on a small scale. So one of these uh, rooms which are used by the men monthly, very tiny room, uh, just next to the hall, monthly hall, I used that as a dispensary and in the year 69, 70 there were not many Baba lovers coming. So. And word went round in the village, so I would get 30, 40 patients in the morning. I alone was there doing dressings, injections, <laughs> taking history, giving them the treatment, whatever it was. Gradually, as the number started increasing, I moved from this, you see, because Baba lovers started coming in. So I didn't want the Baba lovers to be mixing with the patients, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and because any infection they could bring. So I moved to the end of the corridor and where uh, it used to be Kakabaria's room. 
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Twas blind, but now I see. Kakavarya's room was used to store first aid medicines and little medical equipment for minor uh, attendance to wounds and other things. And some people, some Baba lovers had come and one of them donated some stone benches to Mirazad. So some were put in the gardens which are still there. And so, about one or two, I think, were put at the end of the veranda. The patients would sit there. So she donated a fair sum for the clinic, and Nariman chipped in with the rest. And this dispensary got built. The most uh, needed medicines were stocked, and the best of them. And Khavir herself used to go to the uh, to the market and purchase these drugs from reliable sources like wholesalers and all that to get them at a discount for charitable purposes. And so it continued. It began to grow more and more. So, and Gavir, of course, was as busy as ever, running from here to the, back to the women's side and attending to Mera, attending to other deities. And, and at that time, Katie was a great help to uh, Gavir. She came up to that and settled down at Mera Zad after retiring. With as regards relationship of Katie with Gavir, they were both sisters, of course, and they got along very well because of the understanding. So between them, they managed the uh, dispensary for quite quite a long time without assistance. So she would help her maintain accounts because Baba wanted accounts to be very to uh, asked us to be very particular about accounts and money matters. So uh, Katie was meticulous about keeping accounts, calling for medicines, seeing the stocks, everything she managed on behalf of Ghave. Of course Ghave helped her. And so this is how it was started. I was in secretary of work, I come here, Gavir teaches me to be a nurse now. So I was only with sick to give injections, only with sick dressings, attend to the wounds, which I never, I would never see the bloody sight in all this blood and so on. And I was just going to the the dressing. Sometimes it would sting so bad, the wounds would be so bad, festered and all this. One old man had such a bad gangrene, you know. I couldn't get dress him outside because the whole clinic was smelly with his food. And we gave him free treatment, free medicines, free injections, and free uh, tonics and things. Katie and I would fight a lot over the inj injections. She would always take the fat, juicy one and give me the skin bony ones. <laughs> because they are always tough, you know. <laughs> so then we decided, we came to a compromise, 50-50. <laughs> so this clinic work began to go on smoothly. Pendu devoted his morning times to come here and uh, enter the the patients' uh, names and give give the handout case papers 
the, he started to keep a file of the case papers so that there would be no duplication and so on. And he kept doing that work till he couldn't do it any longer. After that, of course, he asked me, I, when, I, when my family came and settled down here in 1990, then one of my duties was to keep, uh, uh, keep an account of expenses, a sort of cash book. There were two doctors hired at the beginning, then a third doctor came, and so it began to become bigger and bigger. More and more villages started to come uh, uh, from almost 40 or 50 villages all around. People started to flock because they were getting uh, first-class medicines and first-class care and treatment. Now we are covering 60 villages. We also covered what we intended to work for the people of our village. Sixty villages, people from Bombay and Pune are coming. And I used to work there with all of us. You don't have to come here from Bombay and Pune. You have so many doctors and hospitals. Why did you go there? We'd be working till 2.30 in the afternoon. We had so many patients here. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fear relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. T'was grace that brought me safe this far, and grace will loving care that they got here, they felt that this was the place where they would get cured. As a doctor, she was excellent. Her diagnosis was always good. And she was an excellent doctor in all, in all spheres. More and more crowds started to come. The, the new clinic site was chosen. Gaver and other women and men Monday went there for ground digging. I was also there. Gaver did all the meticulous planning of and layout of the of the clinic. Uh, she designed it beautifully. Some architect was taken to construct the building and they did a very great job of it. Uh, there are gardens there. There are, it's a very celebrous surrounding with the seclusion hill overlooking it. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. T'was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace, my fear, relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Through many days, 
toils and snares I have already come T'was grace that brought me safe this far And grace will lead